Thank you very much, Brother Edward. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Rasulillah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. First of all, let me thank Ikna Mas on this wonderful, wonderful convention that brings us all together as, as brothers and sisters. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this is the first time I'm able to bring my entire family to see members of their larger ummah. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blesses them and guides them and guides your children as well to what is right. I also want to thank CARE National and CARE New Jersey for the phenomenal work that they do um, in terms of protecting our civil liberties. And I urge you that you support them before you ever need them. Because one way or another, each one of us is probably going to need them. I never thought after all that I have done and show of dedication that I would need them. But I have a, my name, my ethnicity, my religion qualifies me to be someone that our government needs to watch for. And that is very disturbing when we have one of the best constitutions on the face of the earth that protects civil liberties and protects and, and guarantees a due process, which is what we're looking for here. So allow me to share with you my background before I, I go into um, my experience and why I think the watch list is troublesome. My family and I fled Syria in 1980 when the first uprising against Assad, the father, happened. We went to Saudi Arabia where we stayed for 11 years. Then we came to the United States in 1991. I was taught right by my parents and that is to give back where you are blessed. And the United States have given us tremendous opportunities. Prospect Park, which is the town we have settled in since we came to the United States, opened its arms to immigrants. <clears throat> so I decided I want to give back because that's how I was taught. So I started as a volunteer in the local hospital about two years after we came to the United States. In 1994, I joined the local volunteer fire department because I also wanted to give back and I stayed on for 14 years. And one thing led to another and I got involved in politics. I became a citizen in April of 2000. I ran for office in April of 2001. And Alhamdulillah, 2001, despite the fact that it was a bad year for Muslims based on stereotypes and based on those who have committed a heinous crime against our nation, Alhamdulillah, I was able to win the election. And that is because I was engaged in my local community. My activism was strong enough to allow me to win over the stereotypes. And that's where people are disturbed now about what's going on with the disinvitation to the White House and now the multiple stops at airports. Now it's making sense. Because in 2019, as I was heading to Turkey, we experienced issues at the airport that caused us to miss our flight. We flew the next day, and when we came back, I had a, a stop. And I'll, I'll go over it shortly. But since 2001, a year, about 2000, 2001, I, I went into education. 
And I have been working as an educator since then. I ran for office successfully, and I've been winning elections ever since because we've, I think we've served in our community very well, and we get reelected over and over, and my team gets reelected. But then come 2011, and the Arab Spring starts. And now, I feel that I need to give back to my brothers and sisters in Syria as well. <clears throat> so uh, I travel between December 2012 and December 2015, seven times inside Syria, in the areas out of the control of the regime, to deliver aid and assistance to those who need it. Those who have been bombarded by the Syrian regime with barrel bombs, indiscriminate barrel bombs, those who are being dis targeted by Russia through very strong weapons, bunker buster weapons, targeting hospitals, schools, masajid. But that raises the suspicion. I, first of all, I get attacked by the Syrian regime, trying to spin a whole bunch of stories. Uh, anyone who helps, they associate them with, with ISIS and Nusra and so on and so forth. So obviously people told me, slow it down, be careful, so on and so forth. Following that, I go to Bangladesh during the Rohingya refugee issue. I travel to Tunisia to speak about running municipal operations. All of these in Tunisia was the first country where the Arab Spring started. So we slow it down. Traveling became difficult to go inside Syria because now ISIS was in control of a lot of areas. And in all realities, people who are trying to associate me with, with ISIS don't understand that if ISIS would have captured me, I would have been a victim just like any other person, just simply based on where I'm coming from. They wouldn't care that I say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. <clears throat> Please excuse my, if we have water, just allergies. So, so we get to the point where 2019, we're coming back from Turkey after we experienced difficulty traveling, going to Turkey and coming back. And I get stopped at JFK. Mind you, we, changed, we had to book brand new tickets because all the confusions that happened in the past caused us to miss a whole bunch of flights. I had to purchase brand new tickets, um, land in a different airport, so we're going directly to JFK. So because we, are, we booked our tickets last, we were the last to book our tickets, we were in the back of the plane last seat, last people to leave the airplane. And at the gate, there's agents randomly selecting people. And, and that's the conversation. I, I said, how did we get selected? They said, you were random. So that's, that's troublesome when, when your country or agents of your nation are lying to you because there's nothing random about it. So, Short story, or long story short, I ended the conversation when they took me in to interrogate me, is when the agent flat out said, no finessing about it, did you meet with any terrorist? As if I'm supposed to give him a logical answer. <laughs> so my response was, this conversation is over, I want to speak to an attorney. And at that point, I called CARE, and I was in New York, so I was referred to CARE in New York, and they went back and forth with them, and I said, I'm not answering any further questions. And so they said, do you understand? I'm gonna take your phone. So even the way the question is paused is I'm gonna make life inconvenient for you. I said, do what you gotta do. Um, I get searched again. 
you know, and, and they take my phone and we, we were able to recover it 12 days later through the efforts of, of care as well. Since that time, every time, I've never traveled internationally since then, but every time I travel locally, three things would happen to me, like clockwork or anyone who's with me. We don't get our boarding passes electronically like the way you would get it over your email. We would have to go to the airport, uh, stand at the counter. It takes sometimes half an hour, sometimes up to an hour. The agent at the ticket counter has to speak to someone from Homeland Security. Whole bunch of questions. Do they have any weapons? Um, asking me what I do, so on and so forth. We end up getting our boarding passes, paper boarding passes with the quadruple S on it. The second we get to the TSA checkpoint, immediately, the second they see our boarding passes, you see the looks on their faces because they know it's gonna be very involved. They clear everybody behind us and we get our own private line and inspection. And it's a very thorough inspection. My kids are here, some of them could share with you the stories, uh, including swapping, so on and so forth. We get done with this. The last stage is as we get to the gate area, there are agents at the gate as well. It goes without fail between 2019 and 20, early 2021. 2021, I traveled to Canada. We crossed the Canadian border. Canadian agents let us in very easily. As we come back, um, I, some of you probably traveled the land crossings. You see, you know how it is. And the second my passport gets scanned, all strobe lights start working and horns start blowing all over. Agents from all stations leave their stations. They all come to my vehicle, step down. So we all had to step down. This time, they were a little more compassionate and they held me in a, in a plexiglass room for my children to watch me for about three, four hours and ask me why we can't come to you. And I had to be the polite Muslim and say, uncle needs to talk to me, but that's it. But at that point, a gentleman came by and, and, and asked me for my driver license. I said, it's in the car. So he said, he, he went, got my license, came back about 45 minutes later, said, I think I fixed your problem. So he said, fine, thank you very much. We went back to New Jersey. Last summer, we travel to Tel Aviv to visit Al-Aqsa. And luckily, there were no issues at the airport. We're fine. I'm thinking they fixed the problem only to be reached out to by the Democratic Party to ask me to help them gather names for a Muslim iftar at the White House this year. So I gladly provide them with names. Um, I make my reservation. I'm heading to Washington, D.C. on May 1st. And about half an hour away from the White House, I get a call from the White House saying, uh, you did not get cleared by the Secret Service. And in no uncertain term, the gentleman was trying to be nice, says, uh, you should start heading back to New Jersey. Who do I call? I call CARE again. And uh, that's when I found out that I was actually on a list that was created back in 2001 by the Bush administration. And somehow I got on it in 2019. So we don't know how I got on it. You don't, I don't know how to get off of it. They won't admit to the existence of the list, and that's the disturbing part, is here I'm guilty by my name, identity, but I don't have a due process to clear my name. And that's the inconvenience that is happening to me, to my family, and this is something that I'm taking on 
with determination, with care, with the effort of care, because not a single one of us should be on a list unless they're actually guilty of something or their true danger. A list that has 1.5 million entries that was created in 2001 means that the federal government has been working very hard without taking a day off and they're adding over 200 names a day. It is a very tight woven dragnet list that is very sticky to Muslim and Arab names because that's the majority of the names on it. And I think that it is something that needs to be a central issue in the upcoming presidential elections because just like Brother Edward said, Congress can't do anything about it. It is something that the executive branch can do and review very easily. As Muslims, we want our nation to be safe. We do not condone terrorism, nor do we condone any acts of terrorism against our nation or against anybody else. But we will not stand to be harassed to racism that is deep within our system. The fact that there is no process for, for me or for you to get off the list is extremely disturbing. The fact that they don't have to answer to anyone. The fact that my congressman and my two senators both ask for answers and still have not received an answer over a month from federal agencies that work for the government is disturbing. It's full of profiling and it has been deter de determined to be illegal and unconstitutional by a, a federal judge. So what I urge you, and Justin is gonna speak after me, is make sure that you know your rights when you're traveling. Make sure what you need to answer and what you don't need to answer when you're traveling. And make sure that you say exactly what needs to be said and nothing beyond. Because some of those agents, as much as they will smile in our face, they're not our friends, unfortunately. And I don't know which one of them is a racist and which one is not. The fact that someone could flat out ask me if I met a terrorist after we had a general conversation and he knew that I was an educator and I'm a mayor, but I could still be asked such crazy question is, is just beyond me. So make sure that you understand your rights before you travel, make sure you visit CARE's website and know what you have to answer to, what you don't have to answer to. So with that, I'm gonna cut it short because we need the experts to speak and then we'll answer your questions. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.